Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just come into your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the finished work of Christ. Thankful for the privilege that you've given us to feast upon your word. I just ask that you would just filter out all of that which is not of you, but just seal to our hearts that which is truth. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. We've been studying together in the epistle to the Romans, verse by verse. And we are well into chapter 14. I think we left off at, a, at a, somewhere around verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now, folks, I wanted to spend more time talking about uh, Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, because that's where we're uh, at here in our present context. But to do that, I want to jump over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, beginning with verse 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any, a, a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, I've used this passage uh, a number of times in past videos to, to show how that uh, an entire uh, um, a person's uh, a believer in Christ, their entire life's work can be burned up, yet they themselves shall be saved, yet so is through fire. It's something that we uh, tend to, to make light of, I believe, that when, when we're looking at, uh, at this subject, Folks, uh, what I hope to bring out in this video is something that will truly bless the hearts of many of you. Some of you who have not been following along in this teaching, uh, this grace ministry will probably uh, not find that as find this as comforting. But I just kind of bear with me because by the time we get to the end of this video. I've got something that I want to show you that I believe that the Lord has shown me, which I think you're going to find great comfort in. At least I hope that you do. Now, there is no way uh, that we can change the sovereign actions of God. Nothing that we can do can affect that. What happens in your life, folks, and in mine, is of God. He has complete control. He works together for your good. He's working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Nothing touches you that doesn't come through his loving hands. Therefore, let every man take heed. How he builds upon that foundation, which is Christ. There are many passages of Scripture that uh, a great segment of Christianity reads as though it's our power. You know, and it's such an easy thing to say, well, I made such and such a mistake. You know, God wasn't in control. You know, I was, and I made this stupid mistake. You know, I'd never blame God. But I made that mistake when, in fact, you are blaspheming God. 
the very one who says he's working all things together for your good. And all means all things, doesn't mean some things. It means all, all things. You know, that's true, Steve. All things except this one or that one. You know, I made a mistake there. You know, you can't do that. What you do is you say, Lord, I may not understand, but I know that this is from your hand. So we should take heed how we build. We should not make provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. We should flee youthful lusts, which war against the soul. We should walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. All of these exhortations from our loving Heavenly Father will not change what God has ordained for your life, but it will change you. The whole nation of Israel could not stand before God. They all moved back and fell. Soldiers who came to arrest Christ fell to the ground. And that is the God that we serve. That's the God with whom we have to deal. And every one of us will give an accounting of how willingly, how trustingly, we accepted what God ordained for our lives. The difficulty always comes in here in, in the lives of, of Christians, dearly beloved. It, when it comes to the subject of knowing, we have to know what God's will is for our lives. The, the way we are to live and walk and grow, which is in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the foundation upon which our lives in Christ are built. You know, sounds great, Steve, but you don't understand my life. And you go off into a wasteland of dry and meaningless drivel about how it's your fault. You didn't have, you, you don't have a good marriage or your wife didn't obey you as her husband. And the list of tragedies goes on and on. And I hear this all the time, but God is directing your steps. God is working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. I don't know. I don't know what's in your life. I stand before my loving Heavenly Father trembling. And you know, life goes, passes by very rapidly and we will all stand before the judgment seat of God so let's look more closely at that as described in 1st Corinthians 3 because we find this judgment mentioned in our present study of Romans 14 after being presented with an, an enormous amount of doctrinal truth based upon the finished work of Jesus Christ Blessings that were applied to our life as a result of what Christ did for us on our on our, our behalf. Number one, the foundation has been laid, and that foundation is Christ Himself. That's done. In verses six and seven of First Corinthians three, both of them say that God is the cause of the increase, not us. What you and I have is the privilege to be used by God in some aspect of that building and since God not if since God is working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure we should take heed how we build upon it if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble and you Greek students out there you know that in the text here the original text there are no conjunctions. That means the Holy Spirit wants us to look at these as a whole, not as individual concepts. You know, such as, well, you know, I understand what, uh, you know, hay is, and I understand maybe what wood is, but I'm not so sure about what the stubble is. So I'm suggesting that we're only looking at two things, just two things. Gold, silver, precious stones, 
or wood, hay, and stubble. I don't believe that these are building materials. There are, there are hundreds, at least, there's got to be, hundreds of sermons preached and articles written that these are the materials used in the building and many have said I you know I can understand the wood and I'm not real sure about the hay but I know that they used stubble when they made bricks cuz you know cuz that that helps keep the brick together and I think that's really pushing the white spaces I think we're talking about two concepts which are how you build and the way that you build Remember, God is using you. It's been quite some time ago, but I once I once had a brother, knew a brother. He's he's gone home to be with the Lord now. That when he was fourteen years old, he was he was he was around fifty, between fifty and fifty five years old when the Lord took him home. He grew up as a criminal. He was arrested numerous times. He came home. He found his wife in bed with another man, so he shot the guy. And he went to jail for murder. And after many years, they finally let him out of jail. And he came to know the Lord. And people described him as one of the most vibrant Christians that they had ever met. He was absolutely zealous for Christ. It's amazing what God does. And you say, why, if God be sovereign... Should most of that man's life been wasted? And I don't think it was. I don't think it was any more than, than was 50 years of Paul's life wasted. I believe God used those years for his own majestic glory. In, in obviously, or in which case some of it was obviously wood, hay, and stubble. Because that young criminal who grew up in the penitentiary belonged to Christ from the, before the foundation of the world, which one of you out there, you know, is, well, just the same as you and I. You know, we tend to, we tend to judge what, the look at the substance of our life in Christ as, as the only thing that matters is as when is is the day you know that time period which begins which with the time in which we came to know Christ folks that is not the case that's not the case God was working in my life when I was five years old he was working in your life when you were five years old there has never been a time in which we were out of step, out of touch with God's working in our life, or that God was out of step or out of touch with our lives. We were chosen in Him before the foundation of the world. And we have just been commanded not to judge one another, for we are Christ's servant, not our own. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. It clearly wasn't gold, silver, and precious stones in the case of Joseph's brethren. But I wouldn't be surprised if there were other occurrences in their lives where there was gold, silver, precious stones. I don't know. But since there is no conjunction between the two groups, I think the way that you build is a mixture of those two. And then there's the judgment of God, which burns away the wood, hay, and stubble. There's not one person that doesn't, ha it doesn't have or is, will never have hay, wood, and stubble. And the fire burns that away. There's the judgment of God, which burns away the wood, hay, and the stubble, leaving only the gold, silver, and precious stones. No condemnation. We saw that in Romans 8, 1. No condemnation. And no rotten playback of all the filthiness in your life. Yet there may be cases where there isn't any gold, silver, and precious stones. From, And, and here's where I 
because here's where this becomes really interesting to me. I'm talking about from the believer's standpoint. Okay? We're the ones standing in judgment here. Okay? There may be cases where there isn't in our lives any gold, silver, and precious stones, yet he himself shall be saved, yet so as, through that fire or that judgment. Okay, therefore a man's work is divided between that which will burn up and that which he won't remember. This is how grace operates. And I suggest to you that based upon the truth of this epistle and this book, the hay, wood, and stubble is that which was done in the flesh, which failed to recognize the foundational doctrinal truths of grace that we've been looking at, which has carried us along through this epistle up to this point. Law keeping as opposed to grace. Flesh as opposed to spirit. Self as opposed to Christ. Self-dependence as opposed to God, God dependence. Yet it is God who is doing the building. Every man's work. This is one sum total. This is your life, folks. Okay? And it's going to be tried by fire. God's going to judge of what sort it was or, or it is. The wood, hay, stubble will be burned up as useless, and there is nothing in the text that indicates any punishment whatsoever. There is therefore now no condemnation to those of you who are in Christ Jesus. And I've had people say to me, Steve, I don't care whether I get any reward at all. Just the fact that I get to heaven is good enough. And that's basically the same as saying I don't care what God wants. I just, I just want to get to heaven. And you shouldn't say that. You should not say that. If the Almighty, eternal God thinks something is right and valuable and is willing to reward you for it, um, the word is wages, then it must be valuable to Him. Therefore, our rewards are in fact a measure of our love for Christ, you know, did you do it for the Lord or did you do it for yourself? Did you abide in the vine or did you on your own as the branch try and produce the divine? Was or is your trust in Christ or is it in yourself? Are you trusting in yourself? Was it living your life committed to him based upon what he's done or on what you thought you must do? And folks, I don't find very many Christians that are really all that happy with their lives. They don't have the right job. Their boss doesn't recognize how, how great a, a person that they are and, and how they ought to be earning double what they make. You know, they don't like their wife, their husband, their kids. The kids don't do nothing right. It's all a mess. When you ought to walk rejoicing that God is working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yeah, well, I believe that, Steve. I believe that. I really believe that. But I made this mistake. It's not God's fault. I'm not blaming God. But I, I made this mistake. You know, you can't imagine what I did. And it's, and, and it's like, well, now I've gone back in a time machine where I hear, yeah, Steve, you know what we did. You know, we sold our brother Joseph into slavery. You know, we are not going to be judged. The only condition in this context is loss of reward. So you just might want to think about that. The next time you find yourself grumbling and complaining about that, about fixing that flat, changing that tire in the rain, which resulted in you missing that flight where the plane crashed and killed everybody on board. Folks, it is God who both wills and works in your life according to his good pleasure. I think I've mentioned that now five or six times since the beginning of this video, since, that, since this video started. I, I, I can't say it enough. It is God who both wills and works in your life according to his good pleasure. Work out your, our, your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God at work in you, both the will and to do of his good pleasure. 
that word try is is one of those wonderful Greek synonyms. The word try is a particular word in the Greek. The nuance of the word is that I'm going to test something because I know it's good. You know, sometimes people will test something to find out if it's good or bad. It's another thing to test something to prove or to, you know, because you know that it's good. This is the word we're looking at here. I know that there's gold in it, and so I'm going to test it for gold, and I'm testing it with the concept, with the conviction, and with the intent to prove that there's gold there and that I expect to get gold, and that's, that's this word. God is going to try every man's work expecting to get gold, silver, and precious stones. That's what the word try says. And when he has tested us, we shall... Listen to me. We shall come forth as gold. That's what it says. The text does not say <clears throat> when he has tested us, many of us will come forth as gold. Some of us will come forth as gold. That's not what the text says. When he has tested you, you shall come forth as gold. Okay? Now listen, God's going to try every man's work expecting to get gold, silver, and precious stones, and when he has tested us, we shall come forth as gold. If any man's work, singular, a singular in the Greek, shall be burned, his entire life's work, That's not works plural, folks. It's singular. He shall, suffer, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So are we to conclude that there will be some who do not come forth as gold? No. Why? Why? Their entire life's work was burned up. How can they come forth as gold? I want to tell you why. It's because they had nothing at all whatsoever to do with Christ dying in their place, folks. Nothing whatsoever. Nothing. Charles Spurgeon's three most favorite words were God saves sinners. Very powerful three words. Never gave an altar call, yet led thousands of souls to Christ. Oh, the depth of God's grace, Romans 11.33. The depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Folks, if redemption was conditional upon something, anything, that man does, then that would have to be counted as or considered part of the hay, wood, and stubble, which after being burned up would leave us with no possibility of being saved, yet so as through fire. Are you getting this? So I see in the word that a loving Heavenly Father anticipates that when when the, when the wood, hay, stubble is burned away, there will be some gold, silver, and precious stone, which I contend is a result of what Christ did, not what man did. Verse 14, if, and that is a first-class condition, since any man's work abide, if any man's work abide, and it will, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. That's a first-class condition. Most of my, my early life, I was raised in a church where they didn't know much scripture, and I was constantly being led to believe that I would be standing before God, and all of my works, plural, would be broadcast cast live on some kind of big movie screen and people would sit back and gasp you know and say well, man I didn't know he was like that you know look at that I'd have never thought he would have done that and 
this is a singular work my life's work that entire concept is going to be tried by fire to show that there's good content that there's gold silver precious stone there the word try is to prove prove not test to see whether you know that's it's going to fail or not it's it's to test in the sense it's to try in the sense that you're proving that there will be gold silver and precious stone there even if my entire life's work is burned up Christ's was not it's my work that's being tried not Christ's okay I'm the one standing in judgment not Christ there is no possible way that what he did in redeeming me could be considered part of that which is which which is burned up that's gold silver and precious stones that's why the person's life is his entire life's work is burned up yet he himself is saved yet so as through fire I, I hope you're getting this I hope you're getting this in the very subject of the judgment seat of Christ for the believer in Scripture right within the very context right right within the very teaching concerning that judgment we see a particular redemption we see that man is redeemed not by what he does but but what on but by what Christ did it's it's not about what we did it's about what Christ did our destiny does not depend upon what we do but on what Christ did the gospel that we preach is not about what man must do but we we the good news that we preach folks is what Christ did not what man must do but what Christ did gold silver and precious stones it's the same thing I want you to try to, to think of this, and, and, and it, this is not that complicated, okay? It's the same thing when, when with Christ living his life in and through our lives, which amounts to gold, silver, and precious stones. It's what he did as opposed to what we did in the flesh. Are you following me here? Okay? That's gold, silver, and precious stones. That's not hay, wood, and stubble. Hay, wood, and stubble, it, stubble is just the opposite of that. It's what we do in the flesh. It's not Christ living his life in and through us. It's not us living in, in full dependence upon God. It's us living in full dependence upon self, the flesh, the law. That's hay, wood, and stubble. But what he does in and through our lives is gold, silver, and precious stones. And now we have a man who's standing before God at the judgment seat of Christ. His entire life's work is burned up, hay, wood, and stubble. Yet he himself shall be saved, yet so as through fire. And yet we know that after he has tested us, we shall come forth as gold, folks, gold. Okay, the only reason that he's saved, even though his entire life's work is burned up, is because the, the, the gold and the silver and precious stone that, that does remain in the life of every believer, if, if, all, if all there is, after everything else goes up in smoke, if all there is, is what is left, if all that's left is what Christ did, okay, he saved, yet so is through fire. That's, well, that's what I'm trying to explain here. I don't know if I've done a very good job of that, but I love you all. I truly do. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.